which says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, one, have tasted of the heavenly gift, two, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, three, and have tasted the good word of God, four, and the powers of the whole of the world to come, five, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. There are different levels that a believer can reach in his Christian journey on earth. But there is an ultimate level that a believer can reach from which if he happens to backslide in his faith in Jesus Christ, it is impossible for such a believer to receive again the mercy of God simply because he will no longer be willing to repent. And moreover, such a believer by backsliding will publicly be putting Jesus Christ to shame because he will have drawn the attention of much people on him due to, due to the level of the manifestation of God through his life. But by the fact that he falls back into a life of sin, he will therefore be rejecting the mercy of God, the mercy that God had given him. But moreover, he will be causing a huge negative shock, a havoc, confusion in the life of many people, in the life of the many people he would have drawn attention from. Because to those people, he would have become a model, a role model. Many of them, of which would be Christian, when they will see him going back into a sinful life, they will also backslide in the faith. These are five steps from which if a Christian reaches, he must never fall from. For such a person truly knew God without any doubt. He knew, good, he knew the good things God has in store for those who will hold on, on to their faith until the end. Thus the person had a full assurance of the hope of the glory that is in Christ Jesus. Thus the mercy of God is no more possible for such person because he would have deliberately refused or rejected the mercy of God. He would have he would deliberately reject the grace of God. The grace of salvation of God. Hence falling from these five steps is called deliberate fall from grace. Because the number five is the number of grace, of the grace of God. And this is why the word of God says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 to 31. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. Remember, our sins are forgiven because of, of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ did on the cross. But if there is no more sacrifice available, which means that this, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is no more applicable unto you, how can your sin be forgiven? And if your sins are not forgiven, Therefore, you shall suffer the consequence of your sins. And the word of God says that the consequence of sin is death. Which means that you will no longer have access to the mercy of God. Because it is, be, it, because it is for the mercy of God 
that we do not receive that eternal death, which is eternal separation from God, which is the hell burning in hell forever. It is because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, because of the mercy of God. Verse 27, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment in a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary he that despised moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sorrow punishment suppose you you sh shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the son of god in other words he has despised the sacrifice of jesus christ and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace in other words unto the holy spirit for we know him that has said vengeance belongs unto me i will recompense says the lord and again the lord shall judge his people and it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god no mercy of God for those who take the mark or the name or the number of the name of the beast. Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 to 18 which says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did leave and he had power to give light unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and bound to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name and here is wisdom let him that has understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six in other words 666 revelation chapter 14 verse 9 to 12 which add to say and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his angel and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand to the same shall drink the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb here referring to jesus christ for jesus christ is the lamb of god and the smoke of that torment ascends up forever and ever and they have no rest day or no night who worship the beast or and his image and whosoever receive the mark of his name here is the patient of the saints here are they that keep the commandment of god in and the faith of jesus christ the word of god is very clear about the people who will either take the mark or the name or the number of the name of the beast they will be forever doomed to burn in hell this means that for such people they will have rejected the mercy of god by choosing to take the mark or the name or the number of the name of the beast because when a person takes the mark or the name or the number of the beast of the name of the beast 
he deliberately refuses to belong to Jesus Christ and has actually declared that he belongs to Satan for the mark or the name or the number of the name of the beast represents Satan himself. Hence, whosoever or whatsoever bears or has the mark of or the name or the number of the name of the beast, he automatically it automatically implies that such person or such th a thing is owned by Satan or is the property of Satan. This works exactly the same way trademarks work. For instance, when there is a, the logo or the name of a particular company on a product, such as a t-shirt, it implies that this product belongs to that company or and, and, and no one should reproduce the same product without the consent, the consent of that particular company. Thus, when a person takes the mark or the name or the number of the name of the beast, he has deliberately chosen to be the property of Satan, which implies that the person has rejected Jesus Christ. In other terms, the person has rejected the mercy of God. For the mercy of God is only available in Jesus Christ. And this is the reason why the word of God says in Matthew chapter 12 verse 30, He that is not with me is against me. And he that gather not with me is scattered abroad. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, which I had to say, no, this is Jesus speaking again. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is the demon of money. This means that you ought to hold on unto your faith in Jesus Christ, even if it means losing all your privileges of this world, or even if it means losing your own life for Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 25 to 26, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, or whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own life, his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And Jesus Christ added again in Matthew chapter 10 verse 37 to 39. He that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that takes not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that finds his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. There is no mercy of God for those who blaspheme, who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 to 32, which says, There was then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, in other words, a demon, blind and dumb, and he healed him in so much that the blind and dumb both spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but, but by Bezebel, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thought and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Bezebel, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gather not with me scatters abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men.
And whosoever speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is the action or offense of speaking sacrilegiously against the Holy Spirit. It is profane talk against the Spirit of God. It is to have irreverence against the Holy Spirit. It is to show total disrespect to the Spirit of God. And according to Jesus Christ, such an offense will never be forgiven. Hence, the person will therefore be cut from the mercy of God. For it is the eternal punishment of God that is awaiting for him. In this passage that we have just read, Jesus Christ was healing the, uh, the people and casting out demons from them. And Jesus Christ was doing all these astonish, astonishing works through the Holy Spirit. But the Pharisees say that it was by Bezebel, a fallen angel, meaning a demonic spiritual principality, that Jesus Christ was casting out demons. Thus, the Pharisees were attributing the works of the Holy Spirit to a demonic principality. And this therefore led Jesus Christ to state that the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. This therefore tells us that in this particular instance, to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit is to attribute the work of the Holy Spirit to a demonic entity or to someone that is not God. For the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is God himself, even as the Word of God declares in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, which says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word of the Word, in other words, Jesus Christ, for Jesus is the Word of God, and the, the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So these three is the same person, the same entity. For it is indeed through the Spirit of God that God performs all his, wonders, his marvelous works, even the work of salvation. Thus the Word of God declares in Titus chapter 3 verse 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, not the renewing of the Holy Spirit. This is therefore the mercy of God as depicted by the word of God. To let us know that it is the time for us to seize the mercy of God by forsaking our evil ways, by abiding in Christ Jesus, obeying to the word of God. And we need to do it now for the time is fast approaching for the mercy of God not to be accessible anymore to human beings. That is why we want to pray. Abba Father, glorious God, only true God, thank you for your word. Thank you for empowering us with knowledge and understanding. We pray that you will, you will help every human being to take hold of your mercy by confessing their sins and forsaking them sincerely. And that the people truly accept Jesus Christ as the Savior and Lord, living their life in obedience to your word in the name of Jesus Christ. And do not let the time of your mercy pass us by. But rather let us seize this time of mercy 
by receiving it, accepting it, grasping it in the name of Jesus Christ. And if ever you allow us to be enlightened and to test of the heavenly gift and to be partakers of the Holy Ghost and test the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, we pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that you do not allow us to backslide from such a level of spiritual maturity in the name of Jesus Christ. And do not let us reject your mercy by taking either the mark or the name or the number of the name of the beast in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it never happen. Let us also not reject your mercy by blaspheming against the, your Holy Spirit. Please, let it never take place in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your mercy in our lives. Thank you for answering us accordingly. May all the glory and honor be forever yours in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.